Welcome back. It's Sunday morning, 11 a.m., December 6, 2020, and you got questions on rice, and you want some answers, so that's what this video is going to be all about. Now, I've done several different videos on rice. Now, what I did was, is I took and I downloaded and printed off a lot of questions that I've been getting on rice, and we're going to cover a bunch of those today from a lot of the different channel members that are out there. I really appreciate how everybody out there is really starting to put in comments and helping people out and questions and everything else. And some of you are even throwing in some suggestions for me to do videos, and I appreciate that. If you do have a suggestion for a video, put it in the comments below, and I'll do my best to work on covering whatever type of subject you'd like to know. So today, we're gonna start off and we're going to read off some questions and stuff, and I'm going to cover some of those different topics and hopefully answer a lot of your questions. So let's get going on that. This is Survival Preparedness for Beginners, and thank you for joining me this morning on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Hope everybody has your coffee, you sit back, and you can enjoy the video. can't start a day off without coffee now can you okay let's get going on this all right on this video here one of the videos i did it was storing rice long term three insane ways i demonstrate exactly how to and a bundle of myrrh she commented she's a channel member she commented and she goes i have a question that i've always wondered about apart from the bugs being unsightly you know nobody wants to see bugs if they get into your rice would they actually be harmful type that would make you ill i've only been prepping since the late 2018 so i'm still new but i've never heard anyone say if you would get ill if you ate the rice or if you would have to throw the rice away of course i'm preparing my rice for long-term storage but what if bugs did get in then what should i do in a shtf situation even bug infested rice is better than starvation they might even add some nutrition or would they make you ill well that is a very good question now let's just cover what a rice weevil is okay the rice weevil they're all types of beetles okay yet they are not harmful or dangerous to any human beings neither do they spread disease infection or do they bite people. Still, they can be a threat to us in a way that they damage the grains and rice that we keep in our pantry, but they can cause several agricultural losses by attacking the crops before they get to us and we want to put them on our table to eat. To answer that question, I do not believe that the bugs would any way, shape, or form make you sick or anything else. When you do cook them, if you dump your rice, you know, you measure your rice out if you're doing a cup of rice or two cups of rice, however much rice you're making. If you take and put that into your boiling water, rice weevils would float to the top and you could skim those off. I do not believe that they would make you sick. From what I have gathered from doing my research on the internet, but that is something that you would have to take in consideration for yourself. Now, if you do store the rice the proper way and you prepare it the proper way, I really don't think you're really going to have any type of issues. <clears throat> the next question was from Melated Anonymous. And they said, after you freeze the bag of rice for one to three days or more, what do you do next? Okay, well, GOS also said, he goes, I do have a question. I've seen videos in which people freeze rice, beans, etc. for a few days before sealing things up. If you vacuum seal, is this necessary? All right, so the biggest thing you wanna make sure that you do is you wanna make sure if you are really concerned about the bugs is you put it in the freezer, all right? Once you put it in the freezer, 24 hours, put it in there, leave it in there, take it out. I take mine out, I let it set for 24 hours, and then I'll freeze it again for 24. And then I repeat the process, take it out, let it come to room temperature before you do anything with the rice. The freezing of the rice will kill off any of the bugs, those type of things that could be in there because they do not like cold, period. And that would take care of 
that type of situation. So if you freeze your rice, now you can freeze it. You want to put it in the freezer for two days, put it in the freezer for two days and then take it out and let it set and become room temperature. The key to the whole thing is, is it has to be room temperature. Make sure it's dry and everything else before you pack it in your jars, vacuum seal, Marlar bags, however you want to do it. Make sure that it is completely room temperature and dry. Now, Live Life Survival, he wrote in and he asked, oxygen absorbers? You mean moisture absorbers? No, I mean oxygen absorbers. Now here's the difference, okay? Oxygen absorbers are an enclosed packet to help remove or decrease the level of oxygen in the packaging however you want to pack. They are used to help maintain product safety and extend the shelf life. There are many types of oxygen absorbers available to cover a wide array of applications that you can use. Now there's all different types and sizes. They have the, the big 1000 cc's, 500, 200 cc's, whatever it is you're going to, it depends on if you're going to pack in a bucket, if you're going to pack it in Marlar bags, or if you even want to do it in your vacuum seal. Okay, so that is on the oxygen absorbers. A moisture absorber are very helpful in homes, especially because they inhabit the growth of mold and mildew. All right, so this isn't something you're going to put into your food products. To solve the problem of mold, moisture absorbers Placed in packets or buckets can remove the moisture in a room or an enclosed space. Now, I would not suggest using a moisture absorber to put into your food. You want a oxygen absorber, okay? So that is that as far as the difference between the two, all right? Rachel Boyle, she wrote in, another channel member. She goes, how many oxygen absorbers would you put in a three cup vacuum sealed bag of rice. Now, I don't typically use oxygen absorbers when I'm doing my vacuum sealed rice. You can, I did do some to demonstrate how to do that. This one has an oxygen absorber in it. This is three cups of rice and there's one 100 cc oxygen absorber in there. This one here has none, okay? I do put bay leaves into my rice because bay leaves help deter rice weasel. All right. Now I did the same with in here that I vacuum sealed inside of my jar. I put two 100 cc's in here with the bay leaves and this one has just bay leaves and no oxygen absorber. Either way will work. Either way is going to be just perfect. So the, your, your answer to your question, Rachel, would be that it's all up to you. If you want to put them in when you're vacuum sealing your bags, you can. If you don't want to, you do not have to. I would also recommend that you put in, you know, maybe bay leaves. Some people speak about diametaceous earth, which we're going to get to here in a second. You can use that because that's not harmful to humans either. And that's an all natural product. Jason65, he wrote in, he's a channel member. He says, I'm new to this. My question being is if I'm going to vacuum seal individual bags, do I put oxygen absorbers inside each bag? Like I just covered, you do not have to, but if it makes you feel better and if you want to do that, and if you think it's going to make your product last longer, then by all means, if you have the money to buy the oxygen absorbers, because they can get expensive, then put them into your bag of rice. MJ wrote in, and he said, I'm confused on one thing. If I use vacuum sealing techniques as you do, do I still need the oxygen absorber? No, you do not. Like I just covered before, that seems to be the big topic and the big question is, is do I need the oxygen absorbers when I'm vacuum sealing? And standardly, no, you do not. But like I said, if you need to put them in there, if you feel more comfortable or however you're gonna be storing your products, you know, you may want to put one in there, but you don't have to. If you don't have the money for it, you can just buy their vacuum sealed bags and vacuum seal those suckers right up. You'll be good to go. All right. 
Mean Mongo, he wrote in and he says, when you get to countries beyond the Walmart curtain, which I'm assuming he's talking about, you know, overseas, people routinely keep rice and beans for several years at a time in the sacks they come in or in baskets. Unless you can plan to live off hoarding for the rest of your life, that's plenty to last until you can start growing your own. Now, for most people, growing your own rice in, say, where we mostly live here in the United States is very difficult to do because you need the right climate, you have to have the wet fields, you have to have all that type of stuff. Could it be done? I suppose if you live in the right area, it probably could be done. I would think it'd be a lot of work. I think it would be a, you would need a large area. So you would have to have quite a bit of property to do this. Um, I do know, you I mean, you see on, you know, television shows, you see what they do overseas, you see how they store everything. And, you know, they just have the big, huge, like 50 pound bags of the, the rice and beans and stuff like that. And they do, do not pack it like this. How long it will really last not being sealed up is still the question of the day. But I guess in some of these countries, they've been doing it for years, hundreds of years maybe. And they seem to all still be alive. So I, I don't know what would take place if you did not seal it. I do know. You do not want to keep your rice and store it in the bag that it comes in, at least here in the United States. You want to make sure you get it out of that bag and you want to store it in a different way. Uh, the plastic bags, especially if you're buying it, you know, 10 pounds, 20 pounds, say at Walmart, you know, it comes in a plastic bag. Sometimes in the stores you do see where it comes into um, more of a, like a burlap bag or something like that. Now that may be okay to store. I don't know how long it will last long term. It's also going to depend on your storage capacity and where you can store that product. Constitutional Republic, another channel member wrote in and says, I have my empty 35 pound cat litter bucket that work perfectly. I love your portioned method. I have my new food saver, bay leaves, diametaceous earth, and oxygen absorbers if I want to add them, but I will stick to the bay leaves and diametaceous earth for food sealing. You just gave us better alternative ways that work for us not to panic if we can't afford what everyone else says to do this properly. Now that's the whole key. You know, right now, canning jars are a hot topic. So some stores don't have them, some stores do. You know, you may find it in a grocery store, but you're gonna pay a lot more than if you could buy them, say at Walmart. Now you also may wanna check some of your hardware stores. You know, a lot of them do have canning sections. I know like Ace Hardware does. I do know that um, Home Depot used to sell them. I haven't been in a Home Depot in a while, uh, but they did have some canning products in the store. So you may want to check around and do your homework and see if you can find some place that you can buy these where you can save yourself a little bit of money because the jars can get really expensive. The jars you can reuse, yes, which is a bonus. So that is another thing that you can put into your little toolkit there is, is if you fork out the money to buy the jars, the jars are reusable. Whereas in with Mylar bags, once you open them, you can reuse them, but you're going to start losing the size of the bag. And depending on how long that Mylar bag has been around, I don't know if you really want to really use it again. I think it would work. I haven't had any that I've tried yet. Maybe one of these days after a few years, we'll have to try and see how it works. Your vacuum seal bags. Now with your vacuum sealed bags, if you take <clears throat> and where you sealed the bag, if you cut just below that line to access any product, whether it be rice, beans, anything that you put in here, you should be able to reseal that bag again with your machine. So you can get a little bit more life out of the same bag. Just saying. <clears throat> So that was another good question. Victor Martinez, another channel member, he says, I like this method better. I will be getting regular buckets. Well thought out, thank you. Now we're gonna get into talking about the way you store your rice. You know, you can just get regular five gallon buckets. They don't have to be the food grade buckets or anything else. You don't need to spend the money on that because if you're gonna pack it into your vacuum sealed bags, your Mylar bags, and that type of thing. I mean, you could even stack cans in there if you wanted your, you know, your canning jars. And you put them in there and you just 
get the regular lid and hammer it on. If you want to screw on type lids, yes, you can do that. And like I said in some previous videos, that's going to cost you more money in the long run. And if you're a beginner, you may be wanting to save money. And with what's going on in the world today, saving money is a key to everything because a lot of people just don't have money. Let's face it. You know, a lot of people are hurt. So any way that you can save a little bit of money, you may want to think about that. Alex Sirka asked, can I add seasoning to my bags? Also, can I do the same for my beans? I would say yes to both. However, just looking for your thoughts, being that I'm just getting started out. All right. I would not add any seasoning at all into the beans for or rice or anything else. You want to make sure that you have your seasonings off to the side. I have extra seasonings. The, the main ones that we do use, I have those put up in canning jars with oxygen absorbers so that I always have a nice supply of my seasonings just in case of SHTF. Now, Madison Dixon commented on that same post, another channel member. He said, be careful with seasonings you use. Some go rancid over time, particularly the ones that contain oils. So you'd want to stay away from anything that contains oils. It is better to store your seasoning separately, or so I'm told, because it gives you more options when preparing your food, which is totally correct. Mason Dixon photo. I do totally agree with what you did say and how you commented and helped out Alexa Surkoff. And that's what I really appreciate that everybody's starting to do is help everybody out. We are a community. We got to stick together. And this is a very simple way that we can help each other out on all different topics. Todd Hauer said, thanks for the video. In an event of WRO, or without rule of law, you will not want to hide all your food in one place in case you are robbed or burglarized. This is just one more reason to store your food and preps in smaller portions. And I totally agree with that. I did do a video where I pack these into one cups, three cups, five cups, and then I just do my jars. A lot of people were just like, you know, they didn't really agree with like the smaller portions. But in a sense, if you need to store your food in different areas, store your food different ways. If you need to barter with someone, with anything, as far as any of your preps, it is so much better if you have a smaller portion to barter with than if you're trying to barter with more of your product, depending on what you're trying to get in return. So you may be giving them more than what it is actually worth that you're getting. Just saying. Just something to think about a little bit out of the box. Be Happy, another channel member, wrote in, How long do rice last in jars, vacuum pack bags, and Marlar bags? And we're getting to the end here. So we're going to cover how long this stuff will last. White rice, all right, stored in a mylar bag with an oxygen absorber, will last anywhere between 10 and 30 years. Brown rice, which won't last that long, will last between two and five years. This is also all based, you know, you're probably asking yourself, why is there such a wide range in the white rice between 10 and 30 years? It's all in how you store it, folks. If you're going to take and you're going to put it into your Mylar bags, you want to take and put it into a bucket. Reason being, all right, for one, keeps it dry. For two, keeps the light away. And number three, it's sealed in there. So no rodents, bugs, and anything else can get in there and get at your rice. So that would maximize your life of your rice stored in a Mylar bag. Now, brown rice, it just doesn't last as long just because it's brown rice. It's totally different. I wouldn't suggest storing brown rice. If that's something that you really do like and everything else and you want to have a little extra on hand, you know, just remember it's only going to be good for maybe five years. So if you wanted to do just a little bit of brown rice and more white rice, so maybe you could have a little variety, you know, everybody likes a little, you know, something different once in a while. That could be something you could do as an extra bonus to yourself. If you place... Like on here, if you store in your canning jars, vacuum seal them. You can put the oxygen absorbers in or you don't, whichever way you'd like to do it. If you store it in a cool, dry place, it will keep up. The temperatures remain basically approximately around 70 degrees in that area. It'll last for 10 years just like this. Now, if you have a way 
that you can take and get this and you can keep it at 40 degrees in that ballpark area. These canning jars would last for 30 years, storing it at 40 degrees. So just something to think about. Maybe if you have extra room in the bottom of a spare refrigerator, like I have one in my garage, Maybe you could take your jars of rice and just put those on the very bottom, fill it up. You're going to extend your life 20 years. This is good for 10, just like it is, sitting on a shelf in your pantry or whatever else. But if you can get it down to about 40 degrees, you're going to put another 20 years on that, folks. That's a pretty... That would be a really great thing, I think, if you can extend the, the life cycle. And that means you're extending your money also. Remember that. And your Mylar bags. If you take and you, you store those suckers right up and you put the Mylar bags and you fill them full, put your oxygen absorber in there, seal them, store them into your buckets. Those things will probably last you for 30 years at the minimum, as long as it's stored properly. The whole key to storing rice is storing it properly. Make sure that you're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing, following the methods as far as when you get the rice, freeze it. Some people don't. There are people out there that do not do that. That's totally up to you. I throw mine in the freezer. I leave it, like I said, I leave it in for 24 hours. I pull it out for 24 hours. I put it back in for 24 and I pull it out and I let it set there for a few days and get room temperature, make sure it's good and dry. And then I decide which way I want to seal it. It's all on what you can afford, folks. If you only have canning jars, then use canning jars. If you have the Marlar bags with the oxygen absorbers, then by all means use those. And if you have a vacuum sealer, you can also vacuum seal them that way. Now, if you're just storing just for short-term storage, a nice, this is one of the lock and locks, okay? This is my everyday rice that we keep in the pantry. And as I need more, I open up either my Marlar bags, jars, whichever one I choose and dump it in here and we're good to go. I have plenty of rice on hand to last for quite a long time. And it stays real good in here. These lock and locks are really great. No air gets to them. This is great for your everyday use to keep in your pantry, to use in your everyday food supply. And then you can just use these to keep adding to it. Or if you choose so, you can keep these for an emergency SHTF situation. Or you can take and use those to keep filling up your everyday use. This way here, you don't have to keep buying it every so often at the store. Now, when you're buying it at the store, you also have to watch the prices. Prices have gone up a little bit on rice. So the more you buy, the cheaper it is. But you have to have room to store it. So don't buy more than you have room to store or some way to store it in. If you have a vacuum sealer, you know, you can take and measure it out. You take a 20, 30 pound bag of rice and you're going to get a lot of rice. But you want to make sure that you got somewhere safe to store that because you don't want to waste the money and then throw it out the window. So today I just wanted to read off um, a lot of comments, give some people a little recognition for commenting and everything else. A lot of the channel members here. And this was only just, a, a, you know, a small handful of the comments and stuff that I've had on my rice videos. I just tried to pick out quite a few that were really good and that we're going to cover some of the topics that I was going to talk about in this video. So I hope everybody has a great day. Hope everybody stays safe. Make sure you keep prepping out there, folks. It is Christmas time. It's the holiday season. Now's a good time while stuff is still available to save a little money at the store. Make your buck go a little bit further because everybody's running some great sales. If you can find the product in your area, I do notice that depending on where you're at, some areas are running low on stuff, other areas aren't. So it just depends on where you are and what is going on in your area. So just keep prepping, keep your eye on the ball and always make sure you buy a little extra each week. Just put it up in the pantry. Survival preparedness for beginners. Till next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.